We are, I believe, in the midst of, we're maybe 15 years into a fundamental transformation that will shift the way we think about doing business completely. And it will be not unlike what happened in the 19th century, right, when we moved to the industrial model. And it has fundamental implications. It has fundamental implications for the mission, vision, and core strategies for companies and corporations. And obviously it has fundamental implications for the role of philanthropy. Let's face it, tens of billions of dollars are not going to shift the world. They're not. We need trillions of dollars of investment right, in the coming decade or two. Tens of billions isn't going to get it done, right? It's kind of like trying to bail out the boat with a teaspoon. It's just not going to happen. Right? So on the one hand, this isn't going to make it, right? On the other hand, I will argue, and this is the paradox part of it, that never has philanthropy and corporate philanthropy been so important as it is today. But its importance is, it's a question of what's the role, right? Kind of what, how is the money spent? And so what I'll, argue, what I'll argue is that you guys have a rare opportunity to really be the catalysts, facilitators, and enablers, protectors really, of the experimental space, the white space, the pilots. I really do believe that we stand at a crossroads, that this is a, one of those rare times where things, everything changes. In my lifetime, the human population has grown from 2 to 6.7, and if I live to be a ripe old man, you know, knock on wood, I could see 8 or 9 billion people on the planet. I think we know as a statement of fact that we, we have already surpassed the capability of the planet to support what we're doing. Right but yet population continu continues to grow and footprint continues to expand. It's a collision course. It's never going back the way it was. And unless we make some fundamental change in course, both environmentally and socially, uh, it's not a pretty picture looking forward. So it's time to really shift our thinking toward more inclusive models. That's really what the base of the pyramid way of thinking is all about. And so I think beyond greening, which is getting to what comes next in terms of clean technology and lifting the base of the pyramid is the agenda for the future. There's enormous opportunity there and we, and we need to get on with it. And I'm absolutely convinced that corporate philanthropy can play a key role in catalyzing that. There hasn't been a lot of imagination in my view when it comes to commercialization strategy. And there certainly hasn't been much attention in the clean tech community given to the two thirds of humanity that have been left out. So to me, that's a blind spot. I think this idea of Greenleaf, how do we marry clean technology and BOP strategies together, create this convergence and start by, by piloting and incubating new green technologies first in the base of the pyramid and then trickling them up, right? So the popular phrase these days is reverse innovation. Uh, or frugal innovation, you know, that, that I think is the way forward. Unfortunately, our prob uh, for most Western companies, our tendency is to come with a closed value proposition, right? where we've already decided what it's going to be and now we're marketing and trying to sell it to you. In other words, we can't just go in there with a completely open mind and no idea about what's going to happen. We need to come in and be able to represent what are our core competencies, what skills do we have, what technologies, do we but not coming with a final closed value proposition product. In other words, a partially composed symphony, which can then be completed together. That's called co-creation. Right? To me, that's what we need to learn how to do, and you guys can help your companies learn to do that. The problem is they won't do it on their own, because it's not going to follow the same time horizon as conventional new product development, right? as, as a just geographic expansion of a current business. It needs some time to incubate and become embedded. You know? So it's going to operate on a different time horizon, you guys can enable it that. Can able, you can enable that to happen. I think it's enormously important. So I think BOP is not just a marketing problem, you know, about sachets. It's not just a technology problem about, you know, well, we need the killer app. It's really a business process, a business development challenge. So it's about enga engaging with marginalized groups. It's about being on the ground, building trust. It's about marrying the company's capabilities with those in the community and, cre and co-creating a business concept and then scaling it from the ground up. Right? That, that's a new skill which can be acquired. It's about entering into a deep dialogue that implies two-way flow of knowledge and information, not just one-way collection of data, which is deep listening. Right? Where you could actually expand imagination 
and marry capabilities together to create businesses that, and concepts that neither could have on their own. Right? That, that's where the competitive imagination piece comes in. And the only way that happens is through establishing direct personal relationships. You can't outsource it all to the NGOs. People from the company actually have to be on the ground. Right? That, that's what this requires. That takes new skill, once again. We've already talked about that. So I think, I think of this as embedded innovation. I think that's, it's hugely important as we move forward. I think you, you know, you're in a position to, to keep that safe. In other words, it's still philanthropic, while at the same time really providing the learning, the experience, and the early capability and the embedding necessary for the business then to come in and really kind of take it, pick it up and run with it. And it can then apply all the usual metrics. But you can buy it the first couple, two, you know, couple three years to really get the thing off and running. I think that's the crucial take home.